Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Dino Wars, The Destruction of Spondylus. And, you know, I may not actually be pronouncing that correctly. It's well known that my pronunciations are not the best in the world. But Dino Wars is a action game for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was uh, developed by Bandai and released in the United States in 1990. Although, here on the title screen it says Bandai 1989. Dino Wars was one of those games that I had as a kid, and honestly it was one that I never really cared much for. But I want to take another look at it because, one, I think the music in it is really good, especially the title music that we're listening to right now. Also, I think the artwork in the game is actually very nice. In fact, on the title screen we can see two little robot dinosaurs on the left and right, and there are a bunch more little robot monsters we're going to see as we play through the game. In fact, the, the box art for the game was very nice. No, I may I may put up the box art uh, for you guys to see for a little bit. The game also came with a uh, poster that was very nice. Also, like most games of its time, especially console games, the game story was told mostly through the manual. And this game is far too old for me to still have the manual at this point. Unfortunately, when I was a youngin, I didn't take as good care of my uh, game paraphernalia as I should have. But I did look up the information that would have been in the manual if I had it here, and I'm going to read it to you. Something was terribly wrong in the distant, man-made Spondylus solar system. One by one, the planet's central life support computers have been infected with a life-threatening virus, while the planet's surface have been overrun with giant computerized dinosaurs known as Robosaurus. Under attack in his laboratory, in Alpha Planet, Professor Protus, the mastermind of Spondylus system and founder of the Robosaur Project, suddenly realized that this deadly sabotage would only be the work of his former partner, the deranged Dr. Doranus. Years early, the doctor had fled Alpha Planet after Professor Protus had exposed him for performing forbidden robotic experiments on human subjects. At last, he had returned to seek his revenge using the professor's own creations. But little did he realize that Protus had been hard at work for the past few years perfecting the ultimate Robosaur, Cybosaurus. There was only one hope to save the Spondylus system. Cybosaurus must be released. The Dino Wars must begin. Now that's the story from the manual. There's also a little bit extra that tells you the story about the levels and stuff. The game begins on Planet Alpha, where Professor Proteus the character you control, fights his way through his laboratory past the Flying Hounds of Destruction to reach Cybersaurus. I love the names of these things. He enters the AIC. AIC is an acronym for Artificial Intelligence Compound of Planet Alpha, where he deactivates the infected life support computers, LSC, in an effort to return the environment to its normal state. He then boards a molecular, a molecular transporter in his Cybersaurus and teleports to the next planet. Proteus will travel through the next six planets, battling his way to the AIC in Cybersaurus, entering it, destroying the LSC, and then proceeding to the next planet via, via molecular transportation. So, I think it's just about time to start the game, but I will mention that on the title screen here you see that we have a password. If we go to the password, we can enter a four-digit code that will bring us to different stages that we will get to during the course of the game. And it's only about seven uh, stages long, and not terribly uh, big stages. So we can probably get this all done in one playthrough. But here is where you would put in the password. But there are not just passwords to get to different levels. You have passwords that you can put in to get little extra bonuses. One password will let you get the sound test menu. Another will get, let you do a sort of art select where you can see all the sprites of the different monsters. And then there are cheat codes where you can get more powerful weapons for Dr. Proti Professor Protus and the Cyber Swords. We're not going to put any of those in. We're just going to jump right into the game. And literally, we jump right into the game. That little blue dude down there is the Professor. And those monsters up there that I just blew away are the Flying Hounds of Destruction. The game is pretty straightforward. Jump around and shoot your weapon. 
which is a kind of tri-directional bullet here. The jumping is a little, I don't know, floaty. There's a bit of a uh, start up to the jump. And you kind of, kind of feel like you're floating a little bit during them. The platform is also not spot on. So I gotta be very careful jumping from the platform to platform. But luckily, these spikes here are not auto kills, they just deal the, uh, the professor a little damage. And towards the top of the screen, you can see that we're on stage one. We have an energy bar, and when that energy bar depletes, the, the professor is defeated. Our weapon is gun one, and the professor only has a single weapon, although it will get powered up over time. And that second bar is the barrier bar, which is a secondary energy bar, which needs to be de depleted first before our first energy bar can start being depleted. It's kind of hard to see, but those things, they kind of look like a... kind of look like humanoid torsos on flying platforms. And those little blue things underneath us are mines. We land on one of those, we get blown up and take some damage. This here is a pit. We fall down that pit, it's game over. The professor only has one life. But thankfully, we can restart the, the level at whichever section we were in. So if we died here, we would start over as a professor in this section. Since we're still early in the game, the platforms here are... Well, that's the best way to describe it. The platforms here are real. We'll eventually uh, find fake platforms that will fall from underneath us. Now that is an energy capsule. When we collect that, our energy will be restored. And since spikes don't kill us, might as well. We'll eventually get barrier capsules, which will restore our barrier, and we'll get gun capsules, which will give us more powerful guns. And there's the Cybersaurus. And that's sort of the cutscene of us getting into our robot dinosaur. Now begins the dinosaur section of the game. It's pretty much the same, we're going to walk around and jump. Cybersaurus, uh, just like the professor, at the top it tells us how much energy we have, the weapon we're using, and our barrier. Right now we have no barrier. And that blue kind of ship looking thing there in the center is a satellite. That's a weapon for us to use. If I hit the select button, that satellite will detonate, destroying all enemies on screen, and it will be gone. We only get one use of it per stage. I almost always forget to use it. And right now our weapon is just a punch. Cybersaurus just kind of swings at the enemy. There's our first enemy. Same as the professor. Our dinosaur runs out of energy, it's game over, but we can restart whatever stage we were on. And the dinosaur will get additional weapons over the course of the game. In fact, we'll be getting a lot of them. And there are some that I like more than others. Here's our first one. We now have the fireball, which shoots a single bullet forward. This is actually probably one of my preferred weapons. This is another weapon. Now before I grab it, let me just let you know that as you grab a new weapon, you get that weapon at level 1, and it replaces the weapon you have. This is the fist launch. This fires the Robosaurus fists ahead and does damage to enemies. This... I don't particularly care for this weapon. It's a little too slow for me. Okay, we are in a cave now, so no satellite for us. We can actually knock our enemies down in the pits. But if we do that, we will lose any power up they might drop. Alright, and there you can see that's the fireball power up. Oh, we didn't make it. And this Triceratops here has a gun on its back. And there's the fist, fist launch. And it's in a spot where we're almost guaranteed to get it, even though I would rather skip it. I'm going to try to jump over it. No luck. This is one of the things that actually kind of frustrated me when I was young about the game. Was that the power-ups ended up being more of an obstacle than anything else. 
as you as you'll see, we'll take the time to power up our different weapons, and they'll get stronger and more useful. But then power up like that will drop. And we'll have no choice but to pretty much grab it, resetting the power of our power-up to level 1, and giving us a power-up that we probably don't want. Yep, and now you can see why Fist Launch is not my favorite thing. But that dinosaur dropped the power-up for Fist Launch, now we have Fist Launch 2, which goes further across the screen. Uh, since we've gone through the cave, we no longer have these satellite rods. There's another mine we're going to try to avoid. There we go, an energy capsule to power us back up. Those pteranodons are some of the more irksome enemies. Ah, now here is another power up. This is the bomb. Fires an explosive in a little arc that does damage when it hits the enemy. Uh, this is another weapon I don't particularly care for, but if you time it right, you can still hit the enemy. All right, this is the boss fight. This guy, when we hit, you can see that he does this little charge. We're gonna try to jump over him when he comes charging at us. All right, he's defeated. And that is the key that will bring us into the Artificial Intelligence Compound, which is right here. Professor disembarks his dinosaur. And it's time to start the next platforming stage. Not in there is a power-up for us. Two power-ups, actually. And that's one of the things you want to be careful of when you're fighting the Hounds of Destruction. Uh, if you kill them over a pit, the power-up will just fall down the pit and you won't have it. But the Professor now has his second gun. He can now fire it more quickly. This is as powerful as his gun is going to get. Ah! Well, game over. And there's our password. So if we put the password in, we can start from this part of the first stage. Now we can either start over, or go into password. We're going to continue. And we're going to start off right from where we were with the professor. I have a feeling stuff like that is going to happen a lot. And I just missed that power-up that I was telling you about. So you may see me do a lot of editing to sort of speed things along. for his section. We gotta destroy these computers that are infected with this virus. Keep firing at the core, and eventually it will be destroyed. There we go. Now we gotta fight our way back to the Robosaurus. Thankfully, the enemies are gone. Back into our dinosaur. And now the molecular teleporter is here. And we just walk up to it, press jump. And we get the password for the next stage. Now, because we died as the professor, uh, Cybersaurus no longer has his weapon either, so he goes back to his punch. And 
That mine is placed somewhere very precarious. But if we press select, the satellite destroys it for us. Actually, compared to some of the weapons that our Cybersaurus will get, I actually prefer using the punch. And that Pteranodon dropped a barrier for us. So the barrier's life bar will need to be destroyed first before we can start doing damage to our health. And this monster looks a whole lot like the first boss we fought. We're gonna leave him behind. Uh, more often than not, try to destroy the enemies. You never know which ones are gonna drop power-ups. Actually, you probably could if you knew the game well enough. And there's another power for the Fist Launcher. This game wants you to have the Fist Launcher. I, I kind of get the feeling that that's one of the ways they artificially make it more difficult, by giving you a weapon that's really not all that great. There's the bomb power-up. This Joker is firing, firing something at us. Bazooka. Alright, the fireball. That's what I'd rather have. I'm gonna try to hang on to these. There is another weapon. Hopefully we'll get a chance to show it off. Now the fireball has been powered up. And it fires them in two directions. Try to avoid the fist. That's actually good advice when you think about it. Avoid the fist. Now that, I believe, is the... No, that's the bomb power-up. The bomb power-up and the next power-up we're looking for are pretty similar. There we go. That's the beam power-up. It's very similar to the fireball power-up. Just a straightforward blast, but it can go through enemies and deal damage to them. I'm gonna try to avoid the fist. Uh, if given the choice, I'd rather have the beam or the fireball. Although when fighting Pteranodons, the fist is surprisingly useful. This is the boss version of a Pteranodon. Alright, Professor. Right now the stages are pretty short. They'll get a little longer, but all in all they won't be too bad. destroy this thing before it destroys me. And back into our dinosaur. And that cool little cutscene. And back. Well, not back, but off to the next world. 
This is our third planet. I don't know if these plants have names. Our satellite is back, so if I get the chance, I will use it. More often than not, I don't, because I just don't think about it. Alright, now our beam is powered up. And now it shoots off in two directions, sort of like the fireball did. So that is the fireball power up. We're going to try to avoid that because the laser is stronger at this point. See, it's kind of weird that the power-ups actually become more of an obstacle than, than a benefit. That is the bomb. At least I think it's the bomb. Now, our laser is powered up to full. We'll fire in three directions. I'm going to try to hang on to this for the rest of the game, but if I accidentally grab a power-up, we're going to lose it. If we die, we'll lose it. And the professor is pretty banged up from that last stage. Yeah, made short work with him with a laser. Or beam, if you prefer. Alright, we're going to try to be careful here. So I want to destroy these enemies in places where, if I can kill them, and they drop power-ups, we can collect it. You see that little platform there in the middle? It's not moving. That means it's probably going to fall underneath us. Yep. You only want to be careful of that over the rest of the game, because that's going to become more and more commonplace. Not a lot we can do here. With that big hole in the middle, so chances are enemies will die, and they, if they do drop power-ups, it's going down pit. That happens more than I care to admit, actually. That one just flew down into a pit. And there goes a power up. We could really use that. Let's be careful here. destroy this enemy. No, other way, buddy. Alright, all done. Now, we just gotta start making our way back. there. Come on, Professor, let's do this. That little falling platform is back. 
Alright, we made it. Whew, that was a close one. Now, let's get into our Cyrus Source and teleport to the next area. Alright, we are on our next planet. What is this? Stage 4? It's a nice little foresty looking world. And there is the laser power up. Since it's already level 3, it doesn't get any stronger. I tell you about the game's power-ups being more of an obstacle than anything else. We get our health restored. Oh man. I don't know if oh that wasn't so good. So much for keeping on our lasers. Horrible little triceratops. Made me look bad. Oh, we got bombs. are not a favorite weapon of mine, but we'll get the job done. And there we go, we got our beam back. Only level one, but it's a start. Game is making it up to us. Ignore the fist. I'm trying to think of any other games that I can with a power up sort of this much of an obstacle. Professor? So far this is a lot like the last stage that we did. probably end up noticing that a lot of stages are like that. Alright, 
Alright, these platforms are not moving, so they will probably drop underneath us. Whew, alright, we made it. Oh, now this one is actually going to be pretty easy. Maybe a little time consuming, but pretty easy. You can just fire from right here, and that will block most of the shots. make our way back. Which actually I think will be a little easier than making our way here. Start making our way back. Start making our way back. Which I'm hoping will be a little easier than making our way over here was. Just gotta be careful with these platforms. There's our dinosaur. Alright, on the next stage. Alright, five of seven. We are getting real close. Scare us, big pteranodon. Ah, uh, am I gonna be able to make it? Yes! I just tr cried out in triumph of avoiding a power up. I'm all, yeah, I'm gonna keep harping on that. So we're going to try to avoid that one. Oh, I don't trust you. launcher. Ah, we lost that barrier. If it was a little quick, we might have been able to catch it.
Alright, now we are in the artificial intelligence compound again. Oh, and what do we got there? We lucked out. We got a barrier. Now let's see if I can hang on to it. Doing so good so far. This is a tricky one. You see that platform in the middle? It's not moving. It's not moving because it's going to fall. Ah, got it. Alright. Oh. Alright, this was a quick one. And if we're careful about it, we should be able to get through it without taking much damage. platforms and stuff here are probably more helpful for us than they are a detriment. Okay, he is all done. Now we just gotta start fighting our way back. And if anything is gonna get me... Whew, alright, we made it. Quick, Professor, quick! And off to stage six. This one's sort of an ice planet. Oh, very nice. No fist. Alright, that is a bomb. I don't particularly want a bomb. Alright, that power that P capsule I think powers up your weapon to its highest level. Stegosaurus, come here. Can't blow up the mine. Why do you think you're hiding on me? all that blue. And now we have a new type of pulse enemy. Big old sauropod. Honestly, I don't think they're that much more dangerous than anything else we've fought. And we can actually knock him back. Definitely taking more abuse, though. Alright, Doctor. Doctor Professor. Professor Doctor. Oh, now this would be dangerous. But thankfully, we can destroy the enemies first. Okay, 
Okay, hop. Hop and hop. Oh, we made it. Okay, this one shouldn't be so bad. We've done ones like this before. our barrier. But I'm really hoping that the brain... Nope. I was hoping this would be the brain. Well, I keep calling it the brain, but it's actually the computer virus. Sitting there right on a spike. What's wrong with me? Well, the enemy's out of the way. This shouldn't be tough. Oh, this is gonna be a long one. start making our way back. I don't think it'll be too bad. Alright, you're doing so far so good, Professor. Take the long way around, thank you. Alright, this is going to be the tricky one. And we did it. Let's just get back into our dinosaur. This is it. This is our last world. Being that this is also the last time we're going to get to fight in the Cybersaurus.
Right, and there's another sauropod. Oh, this one jumps at us. That's alright, you go ahead and jump. And this is it. The last one. Let's make it count. Another bonus goes down the pit. that shot. Oh, all those useful bonuses just falling into the, the pit, just like I did. Alright, give me a second, we'll catch back up to where we were. Yep, and there goes our bonus again. Let's hope that this time I don't go diving in after it. See, that would have been nice if there were some bonuses here. Okay, there it is. There's something nice for us. Nice little barrier. Let's see if I can grab it. Actually, I might not even need it. Alright, and with that, we are pretty much all done. We just gotta fight our way back. Then we have finished Dino Wars. Ah. Oh, almost got me. Almost got me. Too bad. We've done plenty like this. Alright, and there's Cybersaurus. And all that's left is to take our last teleporter. And there you have it. That is Dino Wars the Nintendo Entertainment System. So, I hope you enjoyed watching me play through it. Um, 
I didn't really enjoy playing through it all that much, to be honest with you. But thankfully, it didn't take too long. The end. Congratulations, you've finished another great game from Bandai. Um, I would have to disagree with you there, but the game is over. Like I said, I think the artwork in it is actually pretty nice, and I like the music too. But that's all. That's Dino Wars. If for some weird reason you enjoyed watching me play it and want to give it a shot yourself, well, that's going to be a little tough. Dino Wars, to the best of my knowledge, is only available on the Nintendo Entertainment System. You can't get it on any other system, you can't get it on the Virtual Console or anything like that, at the very least at the time that I recorded this. Dino Wars uh, was not a popular game, and it didn't do, do very well. So it may be a little hard to track down a copy of the game, but if you do track down a copy of it, it's probably going to be pretty cheap. It's not a very high demand game. And that's really, that's about it. We can't even move past this screen. So again, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.